this is fine. Hey everybody, it's Joe, the 3D printing professor, and this morning I saw two tweets, one from Ultimaker, one from MakerBot, and both of them basically saying the same thing, saying, good news everybody, we are joining forces and becoming one big company, and I, <laughs> I really wanted to go just full sarcasm on this announcement that they made. And, and to be entirely fair, this announcement that they came up with has got a lot of things to make fun of. I mean, there's, there's such delightful lines as literally just choosing something random out of here. Innovation and growth are both critical to bringing desktop 3D printing from a specialty technology into mainstream business adoption. The new company will leverage and expand its combined global footprint with sales and operations. Like, well, yeah, okay, what's that? That that's, doesn't say anything more than is basically said by the title of, of the announcement. And then there's this delightful line talking about MakerBot. MakerBot, uh, through this dedication, MakerBot has a large install base, manages Thingiverse. Do you really? The largest 3D printing community in the world, and et cetera, et cetera. Like... <laughs> Okay, I could go off on this announcement because, quite frankly, it says nothing. We know from this announcement practically nothing. We don't know how much of, of MakerBot's business is going to be getting into Ultimaker, how much Ultimaker gets in, who wants what out of this deal. And it's kind of weird that they're saying MakerBot and Ultimaker are joining forces, when MakerBot doesn't exist, MakerBot is the skin of an open source company that they've gutted and wear as a hat now. That's extremely morbid. Let me try that again. MakerBot was bought out by Stratasys. So it's really Stratasys and Ultimaker that are joining together, but they call it MakerBot because, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. There's a lot of history in this topic that we could talk about. And I feel like in order to understand why this is something that people are kind of getting riled up about, we need to talk about that history. So let me go back to the beginning. In the 70s or so, 3D printing was invented. We have had 3D printers since the 70s, but companies like Stratasys developed it, patented it, and then didn't let anybody else use that technology and i want to be clear here there's nothing wrong with that people are annoyed by the patent process they don't like the patent process but the truth is we wouldn't have 3d printing without it stratasys would not have developed 3d printing if they could not have a monopoly on it for a while and they did and they made awesome machines and they sold them and and they were 3d printing for a while but those patents expired and when they expired a revolutionary project the rep rap project sought to take 3d printers and bring them down to to the level that everybody could use them and it was amazing and it was wonderful and MakerBot in 2009 was founded and took the ideas of the rep rap project and made a kit that people could buy now what they were selling at the time was a lot more expensive than the 3D printers that we have now, but it was still a step in the direction of making it available to more people. And then, what, three years later, Ultimaker comes along and does basically the same thing. Now, Ultimaker and MakerBot were both founded by people and run by people who had a passion for open source. The idea that you take something and you release it to the public. You don't hold on to it. And by releasing it to the public, it gets improved upon and comes back to you better. And then they could take those improvements and put them in the next generation. And they did many, many times. Now, did both of these companies get their designs taken by other companies who just made carbon copies of them and maybe tried to make them cheaper? Yes, absolutely. That happened a lot. But overall, the open source model, while it is tough from a business perspective to hold on to it, these companies held on to it for, well, for quite a while. But then in 2012, all of a sudden MakerBot dropped open source. 
they released the replicator two and they refused to release the source for it. And people were like, what's up with that? Why come on? You guys were such big into open source. Why aren't you doing it? Well, 2013, we found out why Stratasys put out, uh, put in a bid and, and bought MakerBot. And now MakerBot was a part of Stratasys. They, they went closed source because Stratasys would not buy them if they were open source. And that was a frustrating loss for the community, but Hey, we still had Ultimaker. Now Ultimaker, their 3d printers were pretty good, but their slicer Cura, uh, chances are, if you have a cheap 3d printer, you've seen or used Cura or a version of Cura because Cura is used by a lot of people. Now Cura was not made for all of these 3d printers, but it was made to be possible to be used by all of these 3d printers does that make sense it was made for their 3d printers it was made for ultimaker's 3d printers but they said also here guys go ahead and use it on your 3d printers and it worked pretty good most of the time but for the past five years or so ultimaker hasn't really been making 3d printers for the home market anymore their 3d printers are for education and prosumers which is to say people who want a professional grade 3d printer that they can afford and it's maybe not as as good as the professional professional grade although honestly i think that stratasys has benefited from open source when the open source community started making 3d printers stratasys machines the fortis line of 3d printers had kind of leveled out in the quality that they could do and then all of a sudden the open source started coming along and in some ways was better than theirs and they caught up to that so open source benefited everybody and it's wonderful i'm, I'm sorry I, I shouldn't keep going on about this but ultimaker hasn't really been pursuing the consumer market. And part of the reason is because China is making 3D printers so cheap that they can't compete with them. But they've still been improving on Cura, making it better. They just released Cura 5 and they've still held on to it being open source. So here's the question. Now that Stratasys owns Ultimaker, does that mean that they're going to take Cura away from us? And if they do take Cura away from us, what's that going to mean? Well, the answer is no. They're not going to take Cura away from us. They can't take Cura away from us because that source is still out there. You can go to GitHub right now and download the source for Cura. And I can bet you a ton of people have that source downloaded. So even if they try to delete that, it'll pop up the very next day. Somebody else re-uploading it. That's what open source means. It means that it will never die. It will never go away. And it will be the backbone of many a slicer for many years to come because of that so we're not going to lose ultimaker and we're really not going to lose any hardware because again ultimaker hasn't been making 3d printers for the low level consumer market for a very long time so what does this mean well like i said the press release doesn't tell us very much and quite frankly the rumor mill doesn't tell us very much in fact right now it sounds like there isn't a plan the only plan is Stratasys wanted Ultimaker. Why? Well, because Ultimaker was starting to make machines that was encroaching on Stratasys's space. Stratasys was looking at Ultimaker as a competitor, a very serious competitor. And quite frankly, Ultimaker's kind of struggling lately. And Stratasys and MakerBot have kind of been struggling lately. And so they said, well, instead of competing against these people and dying why don't we bring them together and we'll work together and maybe we'll both survive and so in that way it's kind of good maybe not good for the consumer level market but having more 3d printers at more levels especially cheaper but industrial level 3d printers i think is still a very good thing uh, still, as a consumer level, it's easy to feel like 
like we're the the stepchild that's being left behind. What about us? We are we are relying on on the crumbs from your development to improve us and what's going to happen if you take that away. But the reality is that the only constant in the world is change and things are changing. The consumer market might lose Ultimaker, but we never, we haven't had them for a little while anyways. And even if we lose Cura, we're not really going to lose it. We're still going to have it. We might need somebody else to pick up the slack. We might need somebody else to spearhead a new Cura development, or they might keep working on Cura. We, we have no idea what's going on. And I know that the people at Ultimaker are really passionate about still supporting it, about still providing this for the community. I think that there is a best case scenario that could come out of this. There's a chance that Stratasys looked at what happened with MakerBot when they bought it out, the, the headache that that caused them and the quite frankly expensive lesson that that was and say, you know what, we're not going to do that again. What we're going to do is we're going to give Ultimaker the money that they need, tell them our goals, and then get out of their way and let them do what they do. In which case, we're not going to lose anything. We're only going to gain, and this is going to be a good thing for everybody. Or they're going to do like they did with MakerBot, make it all go closed source and run it into the ground. Regardless, though... 3D printing will be fine. It's going to change. It's going to look different because of this decision. But quite frankly, I don't think anybody's going to stop 3D printing. I mean, Flash Forge is still out there doing amazing things. Guys, you should check them out. Uh, Prusa, of course, is still out there. And they are still rocking open source. And, you know, they just took... Prusa printers and turned it into printables.com. And quite frankly, I'm looking forward to that becoming the new Thingiverse. Do people stop saying Thingiverse and start saying printables? I've already done that in, in my conversation. I've told people, yeah, go to printables to find your downloadable models. So I think that there's still reason to hold out hope for the future because this, this isn't going to sink us. This isn't going to change us. We are still going to be doing 3D printing. We are still going to be doing awesome things. And I look forward to the future that maybe this will do great things. Maybe it won't. But regardless, I'm still going to be 3D printing tomorrow. Like I'm 3D printing right now. And this isn't going to change me. And I hope it's not going to change you. But I hope that this has given you a little bit of assurance about this, this new direction that things have taken. And... You know, I hope that we can start up a conversation and say, you know, let's look at the good, let's look at the bad, and let's maybe see what we're going to do about this to make the world a better place. I appreciate you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.